it's an exciting day. I am about to be interviewed by my good friends Samantha and Tanil from the Nature Kids Club and you can check out their channel below. I'm going to share some real insights into who Rod is, um, what makes Rod tick and uh, what I'm all about. So I'll just answer some of their questions that they've got for their audience and I know it's going to help you as well. So now let's jump straight into the interview. Well, I know you're going to be blessed by it. We're super excited to be introducing you to Rodney Ingersoll. He is the aquaponics gardener, and he's going to tell you all about that in this interview. So I've got Sammy J here beside me, our Nature Kids facilitator. I'm Tanil Christensen, and Sammy's going to be asking five very important questions to Rodney today. So I'm going to pass it over, but thank you so much for joining mm. us today, Rodney. Yeah. No worries, looking forward to it. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for being here. So we'll jump straight in. So Rodney, can you tell us um, a little bit about yourself and what you do to fill your day with work and play? Well, you start with the big ones first. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah, Rod Ingersoll, um, aka aquaponic gardener or aquaponic guy. I've called many things over the years. But look, um, what I am and what I do uh, is just part of who I am. And ultimately, look, uh, I'm environmentally qualified uh, environmental scientist. I've studied uh, at university environmental management, studied conservation, studied zoology. Uh, technically, I guess you'd call me a zoologist. I ended up in Papua New Guinea for the last 20 years, up and down, uh, running a zoo in New Guinea. I started up in PNG in uh, 2000, year 2000s, when I went over there. If you remember back the Y2K, well, I went over there <laughs> and um, yeah, I never thought I was coming back. But uh, look, I went up there. I've been a private consultant. I've been a volunteer for years and years and years. I've uh, worked for global corporations like Apple Computers. I've worked uh, for, for NGOs. So I've had a, a very varied career uh, to, to now. I've uh, also done a lot of uh, work with national parks and wildlife service. I used to be a photographer, whale watching tours, and I used to photograph the flukes, a scientist actually, not really running tours, but I was photographing all the flukes and tracking them up and down the coast. I've done a variety of things as an environmental consultant, and now I'm doing a lot of aquaponics. For the last seven years, I've been working in PNG up and down in community development. So I've been setting up fish farms and chickens and ducks and, and microeconomic schemes for women's groups and uh, church groups and and uh, building ways and means for them to not only um, enhance their life, but also provide an income. So aquaponics is just one of those things that I've been doing. Uh, and I started aquaponics about 20 years ago in PNG, actually helping a fish farmer, trying to get rid of his waste uh, and turn that into a, a product. So that's how I started aquaponics. And I'm pretty sure I was the first one in Australia, uh, but I didn't really monetize that. And uh, I gave all my information away for free, really, on YouTube, um, which is fantastic because that's, that's what I do, help other people, serve other people. So in a nutshell, I'm about people and the planet. That's all I do. Um, just look after the earth and uh, serve people and uh, do my best to navigate both. Um, yeah. But look, how do I fill in my day? Um, I am at the moment, as I said, turning a hobby, aquaponics, into a business. So I've been doing a lot of that for the last couple of months. We've got COVID to thank for that. I'm currently not in PNG. And now I'm building an aquaponics business. I, I look at that as a massive positive as well. So I've, um, I've changed track a little bit and now I'm, I'm really building a big um, aquaponics uh, coaching platform so that I can help and serve other people uh, where their needs are so that they can grow food in their backyard as well. So that's a little bit about me. I'm a family man. I've got three kids, um, married, and uh, yeah, live here in the, probably one of the best places in the world in, in Cairns right now. <laughs> Amazing. Can yeah. I jump in before yeah, I ask another question? It. Yeah. So you must eat a lot of greens because you've got lettuce growing out of your eyes in this video. <laughs> I do. And if I get closer to the screen, you can oh, really I see. I love it. Um, and Sammy keeps yeah. disappearing. So I'll just, you know, don't worry, everybody. This is just for your entertainment <laughs> as much as the, the verbal content is. Um, but Rodney, we met quite a few years ago because you were teaching our students from our permaculture design course 
Samantha was one of them. We <laughs> brought all of our students over to your property yeah. and they got firsthand yeah. experience of, of seeing your amazing setup and, yeah. and learning from you. So that was a really nice connection to make. And thank you. It was so insightful. And um, yeah. I know lots of people got a lot out of it. So yeah, yeah. thank you. It's great to be to on this, um, you know, to be in Nature Kids now and staying in contact and watching your journey as well to to make this a full-time global kind of opportunity for people to learn about it beyond Cairns because, you know, we can't travel these days. And I know that you've mm. got an online program as well happening. Yep, yep. I've got a, two, I've got a couple of, um, of mini, I've got a mini aquaponic system where you can click and download instantly. And I've also got a, a one bed aquaponic system, just something to help people to get started really quickly. And there's, there's hours and hours of, of uh, me talking and, and revving people up and uh, just motivating people to grow food for themselves, actually. So, but what I'm doing is putting, that's all part of a, a larger picture where I'll, I will do interactive um, uh, like Facebook groups and building a community and, and having a 10 week program. Uh, so that so that everybody has a chance to yeah grow food at whatever level they're at and um, yeah in the backyard because as we know food security is a, a major issue at the moment uh, particularly with COVID now everyone's starting to say okay there's something here we need to do why did our grandparents grow food and we're not there's a problem there so as people start to turn on that green light or green lettuce in my case right there <laughs> um, <laughs> the light bulb moment then yeah. people are starting to turn to to uh, growing their own food and uh, particularly kids it's it's a great um, great place to start when you're a child and learn from from uh, mentors from the very beginning of your life and make your life easier yes Absolutely. yes and what you're doing is so much fun as well you just mentioned the kids there and that's that's what I think how much fun children have yeah. being involved in the systems that you're you know teaching people about you kind of touched on the second question already but i'm going to ask it again just in case there's anything else you want to add to it but what why do you do what you do rodney oh i've got plenty of reasons why i do what i do um look, i've got a, a really deep spiritual connection uh, to the earth to a creator and mm. to really impact people's lives so i'm here my purpose is to serve other people Basically, if you boil it all down, uh, why are we here on this planet? It's to help people, it's to build people, it's to encourage people, it's to motivate people. So I've got some of those deep-rooted, um, well, spiritual connections to enhance people's lives. And, and I see every day as a gift, no matter what industry you're in, whatever area you're in. If you're breathing, you're alive, you can contribute to somebody's life and you can build somebody up. Or you can rip them apart and tear them down. And a lot of people do that. I'm not advocating that. Um, but we've all got a choice to make. We've all, got a, um, we've all got this life. You know, what's our legacy that we're going to leave? I'm trying to live my legacy, not just leave a legacy. I'm trying to leave a leg legacy, definitely. Leave one behind for my kids. But I'm trying to live a legacy. So everything I do is my legacy. I don't want to get to my 90-year-old deathbed and wonder why I didn't do something. <laughs> So that's why I took off and went to PNG, you know, when I was, uh, I think I was 23, 24. <laughs> took off on a whim. Everyone said I was crazy. Hey, I went anyway. I uh, didn't let other people's negativity stop me. Um, I, you know, getting back to the question why I do it. Yeah, I uh, just have this deep-rooted connection. I want to um, leave something um, behind. And uh, really... I've got strengths. I've got a lot of things to offer other people. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that I can offer that. I can offer a different perspective. I can offer my own knowledge and experience because nobody's got it. You've got yours. I've got mine. Yeah. We can all share an impact and build people's lives. So, you know, there's some of the reasons. Um, but look, I, I just want to do more. I want to help more. I want to contribute more. I want to make more impact. Uh, into this world because it's just too much negativity <laughs> there's just too much too many distractions for people so if we can be a maybe sometimes a lone voice but if we can build somebody up if, if we can educate and we can encourage a young boy um, like when I was really young I had a teacher at school that motivated me to plant a couple of trees in the backyard well he's long gone but he never knew that I would um in my honours degree at uni, never knew that I would um, put uh, my Luca Nature Reserve as an example, which is in New South Wales, 
on the world stage and it then went on to become world heritage listed area all because of that one guy helped me to plant a tree so yeah. i ended up um, working with national parks and, and that's a small little step but that guy that yeah. guy mr creed's his name yeah. and i'll never forget him and another teacher biology teacher when i was in i think year nine at school he encouraged me with his stories on png he'd actually come back from png well he didn't know and I didn't know either where my life was headed, but yeah. in the end, I ended up going to PNG and living his stories that he used to tell me. And he was always talking about butterflies. His name was Jed Mosley. We're still very good friends today. Mm -hmm. So we all have a connection if we can connect with people and uplift people, regardless of where you are, who you're talking to, and be teachable. Um, we, the sky's the limit. You can help anyone. You can do anything. So why do I do it? I want to help more people. I want to serve more people in all areas of life. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it yeah. Goes, goes way beyond the um, your your salad bar patch behind you. <laughs> that's the dressing. Is that in your backyard? Salad dressing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a system because of COVID. That's my COVID system. So I built a commercial system down the back of my garage last year in the middle of COVID in my lunch hour every day for I think it was about nine weeks. I spent one hour a day for nine weeks and I built a commercial aquaponic system down the side of my garage. <laughs> Additional. So I've got seven systems in the backyard now. So I've got a showcase. So I can show people seven different ways of doing things. Yes. Wow. Fantastic. Oh, we need to come for an update then. Yes, please. Come over anytime. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Always uh, welcome. Awesome. Cheers, Rodney. Um, can you tell us how you use this this month? We're working on the permaculture principle integrate rather than segregate. Can you share with us how you use that in your life? Different ways. Integrate rather than segregate. Oh, I mean, I integrate so many things into my yeah. life. I never segregate gate anything but I think I touched on I've got a few points um, I think the first thing is is a connection like I mentioned before a deep spiritual connection I integrate that and also dreams um, now I'm you might think I'm crazy but I dream a lot at night I really hear things I see things it's just like if someone if you can think of someone and say oh a phone call I need to ring that person and then suddenly you hear that they're dying or whatever it's, yeah. it's some sort of spiritual connection so I try and integrate the spiritual level into reality and I take action steps according to what I dream, according to what I think and experiences that I have. So that's the first thing. I take the dream world and the thought processes that I have and the connections I make with other people and I turn that into something and I turn individuals' um, knowledge into something that will benefit even more people. So I don't segregate different people. I integrate people. So that's one. Uh, secondly, uh, from a food production type system, we're talking about food here in the earth. Um, look, I'm doing aquaponics, but I don't do that as a standalone system. Now I'll talk about aquaponics in a second, but what it actually is, because we haven't touched on that yet. But um, what I try and do is I have a holistic view, a permaculture view of my food growing ability. So I've got all sorts of things, uh, grass swales and I use nature and landscape and compost and worm farms and and I also have aquaponics so it's one way that I integrate um, uh, using a waste product because that's the next point turning a waste product into food production so I integrate um, say containers in this photo you see there that they're fiberglass tanks now they are an actual aquaponics design tank but what I mostly do is use a recycled material like a it's called an IBC tank, which is a, you might have seen a bulky bin. Some some people call them or tote tanks. It's a big square, meter square tank with a cage around. You see them on all wharfs, on basically in all areas of the entire world. Mm. <laughs> they are they usually they transport food around the world um, mm. and oil and other things, but try and find food grain. But you use that. It's a waste product. So I chop those up and I use them as, as tanks and I use that um, to make garden beds and fish tanks. Um, another way that I use um, integration is fish waste. Now, if I was just in the aquarium industry, I would have a problem. If I was just um, in, say, um, yeah, if I was growing fish like a barramundi farm or something, I would have a problem because too much nutrient kills fish they wouldn't last a second they wouldn't last more than uh, 
couple of days anyway, uh, in their own waste. So what I do, I use the waste as a nutrient and that is fertilizer for all of my vegetables. And, and that, um, all my grow beds, like the one behind me, that's a, a floating raft system, but I also use gravel. And all of that becomes a biological filter, a living, breathing biological filter for my fish. So the fish um, benefit from filtration. They benefit from their waste, which has disappeared because it's been utilized and, and uh, used as from a sustainable source into vegetable production. So I eat the veggies, I eat the fish, and the fish benefit also by oxygen because the water goes back around and cascades down and I use gravity. I int introduce gravity into my system. And by using gravity, I'm not using electricity as much. I'm saving money. <laughs> I'm also saving money by not driving to the shops. I'm integrating. If you look at it from a sustainable system, it's the triple bottom line. That's my approach, the triple bottom line. So I teach other people. It's the community element. I make money and save money at the same time. And, um, and it's also sustainable. So that is the triple bottom line that all businesses are trying to achieve. Yes. Um, if you just integrate your knowledge, you can achieve a simple thing like that in your backyard. So I'm not a big farm. I'm, not, I'm a small guy in the backyard. But when you integrate nature into an idea, hey, the world's, world's uh, out there. <laughs> you can do anything. Um, and from another point of view too, you build a community. So I'm building a community as well, much like you, you ladies are. Um, you're building uh, your Nature Kids community and Earth, Earth community there. Well, I'm doing the same thing with aquaponics community. So like-minded individuals can come together, learn from each other and benefit from everybody's collective experience. So you integrate knowledge and you can build something fantastic and everybody wins. Everybody gains from that process. So there's no point being alone. Everyone should work together. Um, we're not called to be a part. We're called to be, be one, aren't we? So yeah. As a collective. So if that's my viewpoint. If we can integrate such things into our own business, the sky's the limit. You can do anything. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> um, so our next question is, what, what advice would you give to our Nature Kids families about being earth carers? Oh. All right. I've got lots of things to say. You'll have to stop me if you don't want me to, to talk. <laughs> We're loving it. But, yeah, uh, look, I've, great. <laughs> I've, I've got heaps to say. I've even got a few notes here, so I might have to refer to those. But Look, I've thought about this my entire life. Um, advice to not just earth carers, but also to my kids. I'm a father. I've got to give them advice every day. Um, I'm a husband. I'm also a son. So I've, you've got to think about the words that you're speaking every day, I think. The biggest thing that I think that I keep telling my kids is their biggest opportunity is in front of them. Don't worry about tomorrow. Yesterday, <laughs> worry about tomorrow. What you can accomplish tomorrow. Um, do what you love. Second point, I think, do what you love and what you're passionate about. As I mentioned before, I used to do whale watching, taking photos. I was very passionate about that. I still am. I love it. But I'm now doing aquaponics. It doesn't matter. I'm still that whale guy, whale photographer guy, and now I'm aquaponics guy. That is this guy. Yeah. Um, it's just the same as I'm the community development guy in Papua New Guinea. It doesn't mm. matter. I am a collective of all of this experience. So do not change who you are. I'm not going to be molded and shaped into someone else's belief system. Mm -hmm. I have my own system that I follow. Um, so I, I think that's a great if, if that's a great point. And if I when I was thinking about this when you gave me that question, um, I was thinking as a kid, what advice would I would have preferred to hear as a kid? <laughs> and this is some of the things that I've learned over all my life now, 40 odd years. This is what I would like to hear. Um, don't listen to the naysayers either. Too many of them. Yes. Don't listen to naysayers. If I'd done that, I would have stopped in my tracks years ago. Because um, I, just real quick, real personal here for a second, just for having red hair, being different, persecuted my all my childhood. If I'd listened to one of those people, I would have never done anything, never achieved anything. Instead, I used that as rocket fuel. It fueled my desire. Mm. So don't listen to these naysayers. Follow your heart is another point. Just follow whatever it is you're passionate about. Don't stagnate. Don't stop. Do something. Keep momentum going every single day. So if you're trying to plant a forest, what do you do? You've got to start with planting a seed. If you're trying to restore a paddock, an old degraded paddock that's been um, used for years by cattle and it's all eroded away, what do you do? You've got to actually 
dig the soil, you've got to plant some seedlings, plant some seeds. Soon you'll have a canopy. You need emergent species. You need biodiversity. Birds will come in, cassaris disperse seeds. Um, all sorts of things will happen. And then suddenly you'll have frogs and lizards and snakes and reptiles and all these arboreal mammal species. It's all going to come. Why? Because you planted a seed. So action steps, little things each day. Don't stop doing the small things to build a greater um, something greater in the future, but you've got to feel as well and connect to something. If you don't connect to something, you'll fall for everything. <laughs> so you have to be passionate about something and follow it, follow your dreams, follow your heart. Don't listen to other people <laughs> and belong to a community as well. So you've got your community as I touched on. I've got a community that I'm building as well, whether that is a you know, farming community or your local church or your local sports club or whatever it is, belong to something, <laughs> belong to a community so you can connect, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so don't lose hope. Just keep going. Don't stop and um, stay motivated, stay committed because that's the worst thing you can do is stop. <laughs> yeah. If you stop, nothing's going to happen, whether you're restoring a, a field or you've got a business opportunity, a business idea, or if you've got a school that needs restoration and you're you're wanting a, a veggie patch or a worm farm or compost heap you've got to start somewhere don't stop just have the idea but little tiny action steps along the way and you can achieve anything as a kid real quick example i listened to david attenborough as a kid that's all i just all i did was listen i didn't really watch cartoons i watched david attenborough as a result, my mind was conservation, protection of the earth, protection of the planet. And what did I do? I became an environmental consultant. I studied science. I, I went over and discovered new species in BNG and in Australia. So one little seed someone can plant in you, you can do anything. Um, so I just want to inspire your, your audience because you can do it. Don't let a single person stop you. <laughs> Feed and strengthen your mind and your heart all the time. If you do that, you'll never stop. Mm. But I think I'll stop because I'm talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> so, I love it. So great, wise words. Grabbing Thank onto you. all of that there. That's beautiful. I actually took notes. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, yeah. look, at that. look how cool that water is. <laughs> Green <laughs> yeah, filtered I water. <laughs> I really love what you said in, um, towards the end. I love everything that you said, but there was a point there Um we have, you know, lots of people have the vision and they talk about, you know, sustainability and having, you know, the, the sustainable landscape and growing food and, you know, mm. school community gardens and all of these things. It's so easy yep. to to um, to dream it up and mm. to, to have these beautiful mm. visions. And in this line of work in permaculture, I hear it from people all the time. Yep. But it's the integration, like how do we actually make it happen is those little steps every yep. day. There's the planting of the seed, but there's mm. the caring, the looking after, the maintaining, the, the consistency. Yep. Um, so that, yeah, that's really powerful, I think. And, mm. and also what you said about watching David Attenborough, you know, we're, we're quite protective around what our children watch as well because mm. they're little sponges and you know, we can relate on that coaching in that coach, coaching realm of, you know, what you what you see in the world and what you believe, yeah. um, there's there's levels of programming happening consistently um, on all levels from all ages. And so, mm. as parents, we kind of have that responsibility of um, of ensuring, like, you know, having boundaries around what our children are actually taking in, what what seeds are being planted in mm. their minds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, and, thank and you. I, there you go. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say that what I found as well is that 80% of success, no matter what you do in life, is actually psychology, it's mindset. So if, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Dale Carnegie that said that. But if you truly think you can do something, you can do it. 80% of your mindset is actually believing you can. And the 20%, you can learn that in five seconds. You don't have to go to university like I did. I, I believe because that's what I was told I had to do. It's yeah. in reality, you know, I could have done anything else. <laughs> but um, it's only 20% you have to learn. The rest, yeah, you believe. Mm. Yep, absolutely. Where we do you. our in live um, nature kids school holiday programs, at the end of the four or five days, we have a little ceremony with the children. 
and we um, we give them a crystal or a gift of some kind, you know, something that's like made a little bracelet or something. The crystals were a hit <laughs> mm. um, to to congratulate them for being earth carers. And we mm. still see, I still see the little kids that have come along, and they're just like, they really own it, they believe it, and they're proud. And it's like, I'm an earth carer. And we've talked with them for that those you know few days that we've been with them around composting and recycling and growing our own food and and finding our fun in nature and leaning mm-hmm. into nature to ground and for our you know for connection and belonging and those things that you touched on. So mm. that's our little like planting of the seeds <laughs> in the short time we have with other children. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. Me. Mm. Well, we only have one question left and I, I'll, I'll ask you this one, but you also mentioned that you haven't really explained aquaponics. So we want to give you the opportunity to do that as well. But um, the last, yeah, the last question is what, what do you love most about nature? Oh, that's a big question. Um, what don't I love about nature? Yeah. Look, I find peace and solace in nature. I'm connecting with my creator. I find majesty in creation. I, for me, when I go to the bush, then I feel that I learn the most. I feel things, I see things, I dream more. Mm. Um, if I'm separated, if I live in a city, as an example, which I cannot do, but if I did and I'm disconnected from nature, I suffer personally, I suffer creativity, my creativity suffers, and it's, it's a disconnect. So if you're disconnected from nature, I find, then pretty much everything starts to dry up and you become bitter and twisted. And, you know, look at anyone in the city, I'm not picking on anyone, but you just think about city life versus um, wherever else you are in nature. I mean, you're with the birds, you're with with frogs. I just love the um, like different species and the biodiversity. As an example in Papua New Guinea, I'll just use this one as an example. The rain the rainbow eucalypt. I love the rainbow eucalypt. It's just all this rainbow bark. I don't know if you've ever heard of it before, but it's a it's a eucalypt. It's a, it's native to New Guinea, but also Philippines and Singapore. I think not Australia. I don't know that it's even here, but I've only seen this in Papua New Guinea into really remote fringes of rainforest. And it's a it's a tree that has majestic all these colours of the rainbow, and it's just. It's nothing like it. It just glows in the middle of nowhere. I just love that I can discover new things like that. I love tree kangaroos. <laughs> I love long beaked echidnas, not just the short beak that we've got here in Australia, but I found a new species. Well, not new, it was known to science, this one, but long beaked echidna. I never heard of it. And then suddenly I saw this echidna with a jolly snout on it that long. And I thought, this is the weirdest looking echidna. I've got them back home, but they're not with a big snout. I love being surprised. I've you know, who's heard of a tree kangaroo? All our American friends. I often have people over at my place, all sorts of backpackers and helping me in the yard and other things. And I, you know, visitors, and they, they think I'm joking when I say a tree kangaroo. Like, it's unheard of. Everyone's heard of little tiny kangaroos and wallabies jumping around, but living in a tree? I'm serious. They do. You know, I've used, I've bred these things. I've, I've, um, I've interacted with all sorts of species in nature and, and gone out and f- found frogs and reptiles and snakes just because I want to I feel connected so if I don't go into the rainforest deliberately or climb a mountain deliberately to find a high alpine species of frog then I'm not living to my full potential because Mm -hmm. I can just feel connected when I get to the top of a mountain even if I'm by myself last week I walked to Coranda by the way uh, from Cairns it's not that far really it's just straight up but it's like 10k it's not far but I deliberately did that to clear my mind. I just wanted to clear my mind, um, the stress of the, the week, the month, the year, and I just went for a walk. And uh, you know, I do that because I come back down. Not only am I fitter and healthier, but more than that, I can think uh, very clearly when I come back and I go, okay, I'm going to build an aquaponics coaching program, <laughs> as an example. You know, you just you're more creative. So um, I find solace in nature. When I'm hurt or struggling, you know, it's, it's a healing uh, time for me as well. So without that, I can't move forward. So I, I can't live in a city, just me personally. Yeah. If you can, fantastic, but uh, to your viewers, but I cannot. 
if I did, I'd have to have aquaponics on the veranda inside. I'd have to have veggies growing in the windows. I'd have to be. I'd have to have pot plants with veggies growing everywhere, yeah. and uh, and then I might feel okay for a month. Otherwise, <laughs> I need to go in a rainforest. I need to go and go for a walk. I need to um, and connect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Did you hear about what's coming to the cities though? No. There's new cities evolving and they've got rooftop gardens and aquaponics oh, yeah. down alleyways. Yep. People are riding their bikes. They're growing their herbs yep. in the balconies. <laughs> There's community food shops <laughs> and mending stations. And forest uh, <laughs> I'd love to be in one of those cities, but that's about the only one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's great that we can build green walls. It's great that we can actually finally come to our senses <laughs> yeah. from a building design point of view. Yeah. yeah, that's really yeah. great. great There's system. definitely opportunity for green cities and sustainable cities. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Yay. Well, let's, um, yeah, we asked you our five questions. Yeah. But could you tell people more about um, aquaponics <laughs> and how they can connect with you and, um, yeah, what you're doing to help people in yeah, that sure. Look, Look, as I meant, look, I've got a, a website. You can, you can check it out. I'm sure you'll put it in the description there, but Aquaponic no. Gardener. Yep. Yeah, aquaponicgardener.com will get me. Um, and from there, I've also got a YouTube channel and I've got Instagram and I'm trying to be more social on social media, um, building a community, building followers there. But what I'm trying, what I'm doing, I won't say trying because I'm doing, um, yeah. I've changed the language. Yes. Uh, what I'm doing is building a coaching platform, a coaching program so I can take people through step by step simply um, all the different things you need to do to learn how to build aquaponics, grow food for yourself. So what aquaponics is essentially is uh, it's the practice of, of growing fish and veggies together in a small container. So it could be the size of this one behind me, which is quite large, or it could be in a pot plant. You could stick a pot plant above a fish tank and, and a little tiny pump and pump the water to the top of the fish tank. That's aquaponics. You could grow lettuce in the top of your fish tank inside and that also becomes a filter. So it doesn't have to be complicated. Um, I've got seven different ways that I do things and I'll show people all those seven ways, but it doesn't have to be complicated. And I try and do the simplest steps and use all my environmental and sustainable development knowledge to put it all into one spot. So there's other people talking about aquaponics and they do all different things. That's them, that's great. No one is doing what I'm doing because I'm the only one of me. So I'm incorporating sustainability at every single level, whether that's energy, whether that is um, the type of fish or the type of vegetables or, or how you um, uh, use integrated pest management to get rid of bugs. And, and uh, I don't use any of any other sprays other than the ones that I make as an example. Um, but it's all integrated. Aquaponics, as I said before, it's a waste product. You're taking things out of a waste stream. That's what I advocate. But um, it essentially, it's a closed loop system. So you pump the nutrients from the bottom, from the fish, that becomes a filter. You eat the veggies and you eat the fish. And it just keeps cycling around, uses less water, one tenth of the water of uh, traditional um, soil gardening. Mm -hmm. And it just keeps recycling. You lose a little bit through transpiration and evaporation. But other than that, you, you don't stand there all day watering. Mm -hmm. um, and you know where your food's coming from. It's right there in the backyard, just like permaculture. You go outside, you can pick it and eat it. It's fresh, it's organic. There's no pesticides, no fertilizers, anything. It's all at table height. I've got a bad back, so I don't want to bend down. So everything for me is at table height, and that's the beauty of it. You can adjust the height of this thing as well. So you never have to bend. There's no digging either. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no digging, no bending, no lifting. For me, it's it's perfect garden. It's a lazy gardening approach. I do. Let the fish do the work. I just feed the fish. <laughs> <laughs> Benefits. So what I'm, I'm doing is I'm putting all my knowledge in all areas of walks of life, whether it's motivation, it's, it's mindset, it's it's uh, organic vegetable production, it's, it's fish husbandry, it's zoology, it's everything all into one package. That's what I'm building. And I also do free live um, events as well often, and all that's advertised in my Facebook group. So if anyone wants to join that, it's a private Facebook group, and I go in there live each week. And, and then I also do five-day challenges, I call them, five-day challenge of aquaponics where I give five days of knowledge free. So I just want to give knowledge away so that it uh, comes back to me tenfold. Uh, 
principles of sowing and reaping hay. So that's what I do. And I'm building a program around that. Wonderful. So. Excellent. Yeah. Well, I can only see success and more gardens growing across the nation and um, in a very sustainable way. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for everything that you've shared today. We will pop those links below mm. so people can connect. Yeah, mm. Yep. Anything else you want to add, Sammy? Um, no, I have lots of questions, but I'm going to get in on that Facebook group and uh, do one of your courses <laughs> too, I think. <laughs> no, Please do. You're welcome. Yeah. Everyone's welcome. Yeah. Thank you so much. I think this, uh, you, you know, added so much wisdom and value and tips in there today, especially with that, the principle that we're working on this month. There's so much integration in your systems and also in your life and your lifestyle that you shared with us. It's been really interesting. Thanks, Rodney. Yay. Yeah. Hope this interview has inspired you to get outside and to uh, interact with nature. Uh, check out Samantha and Tanil's uh, Kids Nature Kids Club. Uh, the description will be below. And uh, yeah, have a look at my other videos as well. I'm, I'm posting uh, twice a week now as well. So usually on a Wednesday and a Sunday. So look out for the next video from myself. Until then, have a great day 